Good morning everyone. Once again here from Morocco. We've just arrived in Agadir, which is the famous resort city of Morocco. I think it's the most famous beach destination in Morocco. So we came here from Tagazu, pretty packed bus. Yeah, we got the local bus and it was uh, 7 dirham per person. I think the taxi would have cost like uh, 300 or something, which is like 30, 30 euros. That's a big difference, so that's why we decided to get the bus. It wasn't too bad though. No, it was like 30 minutes as well, so not that bad. We've had worse uh, buses in Rio. Yeah, in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to packed buses. So already the moment you get off the bus, you can see like big hotels here. Since it's a big resort city, there's a casino over there. And there was also a nightclub here. So very different vibe to Tagazu. Yeah. Tagazu, where we were in the last video, is just like a sleepy fishing surf town on the coast. So it's going to be very different. And this area here is the Corniche, a nice big walking area, loads of cafes and restaurants on the side. Seems to be mainly a public beach, but they do have some private areas. I guess that this belongs to the cafe over there. Man, that is one wide beach. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> a lot different to the beach in Tagazu as well. Yeah, the beach in Tagazu are nowhere near this wide. This one's massive. So at the end of the beach back there, there's a marina too, that's supposed to be really nice. And you can also see a fort on the top of that hill. So that's where the old city, the original city of Agadir would have been. So we're planning to go there also later on. And it is a weekend today, so I guess there's more locals around. I don't see locals around this part here. So I don't think we're going to be doing any swimming here. It is pretty ice cold, the water. We've been going in, but with a wetsuit when we've been surfing. Not really that many people swimming around here, only a few. So we just saw the weirdest thing ever. Some guy was swimming in his uh, swim trunks. I think he's a uh, European, tall white guy. And then he, he comes out and then he just gets completely butt naked, like completely naked. In, in front of local women too, like local Muslim women. They're probably the craziest thing I've ever seen. And uh, it was just to switch out from his trunks and put uh, swimming shorts on. But obviously you can't do that here. I mean, we've seen it a few times in Europe on other public beaches, but even then, it, it's kind of weird even then, right? On a public beach. Yeah, we've seen that in Portugal and like the, the Portuguese people, the locals, they also find it weird. <laughs> But I think it's maybe it's a German thing. Uh, somebody told me that ger for Germans, that's just normal. Yeah, basically when they get out of the water, it seems they want to remove the swimwear and kind of change what they're wearing for the beach. Yeah, I think they have two types of swimwear, but I don't know, it's not normal for everybody. Yeah, so luckily the, the local women were actually just kind of laughing. I think they were still in shock though. They were like, what the hell? But depending on the people that were around, I think they'd got a bit of a different reaction. Yeah, I can't, re I can't actually believe that the, the guy did that just now. But here in the tourist destinations, it's actually normal to wear a bikini from what we read before and from what we've been seeing. Yeah, apparently the locals don't wear bikinis, but uh, foreigners can wear, it's just fine. We saw many foreigners in bikinis, uh, more in Tagazu, but also here uh, we see and it's just fine, not, not a problem. Yeah, so from our travels, that just changes depending on what Muslim country you're in. Um, we've been to some, I think like Oman, where there's just no chance. We even went to places in Oman where I wasn't allowed to wear a t-shirt. I had to like hide my elbows and my, my knees. But then you can go to other places like uh, Malaysia and stuff, where they have many beaches where it's normal for women to wear like bikinis. So 
Yeah, it just depends. You just gotta read up before you go to the places to make sure you're not being like disrespectful or anything. That's it. Heading into the marine area. Looks like a bit of a rich area. I don't know if these are apartments. Pretty fancy looking buildings though. It's a pretty nice marina though. Actually reminds us a lot of the marinas that we see in the Algarve in Portugal. Some places around Morocco actually remind me a bit of Portugal. You get the palm trees. Over there they also have like the olives and uh, orange trees, things like that. Quite similar. They also have like the orangey rocks here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the constructions are kind of similar. To like the not Algarve. Too, not too tall. Mm -hmm. Be a good place to have a fishing rod here. Like millions of fish here. They also have the gigantic seagulls here. Like you get in the Algarve. They're like seagulls on steroids. <laughs> they seem to be the exact same type. And you have surfing in the Algarve too, so. Yeah, it's just very similar but also completely different in many ways too. So just like many international beach destinations, you get all different kinds of food options here. Some pizzerias. We might actually go for Indian food. We've been eating Moroccan food every single day. And it's also easier to find alcohol around here. There's some places in Morocco that don't have any alcohol at all. I think in Tagazu, there's only a few places that would sell alcohol. So as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, first I thought that we were going to stay here instead of uh, instead of Tagazu. But uh, one of the things that I didn't like about this place was that the hotels, all the reviews were always complaining about the noise from the bars and the discos. The nightclubs. <laughs> yeah, now we can see why, because there are so many bars and nightclubs around here. Yeah, that's a nightclub there. But if you want to party, I think this is a good place to come. Uh, yeah, it think, seems like it. Yeah, I think many people from the UK come here to party and get drunk. <laughs> Some other places that you can visit. Looks pretty cool. Won't be making it there on this trip. Paradise Valley. So the restaurant is Bollywood Pakistani Indian restaurant. So it's right on the beachfront the walkway so as always we'll go with the papadums we love that at the Indian places 30 I might get two samosas too meat samosas 55 and we always get a naan too plain naan is 15 and then I might go for my favorite the chicken tikka masala 125 what are you thinking of uh, chana masala chana masala yeah my favorite and that is 85 so delicious yeah, I love this. Mm. Yeah, the spreads are, are all great. And I didn't realize the samosas were going to be so massive. Look at the size of that. They're usually small, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So the feast has arrived. There's my chicken tikka masala. It also comes with rice in that price. Big dish of rice. And then, yeah, you got the naan breads here. Just a nice amount of spice. That's always difficult when we order Indians because sometimes you say mild and then it comes with like no spice at all. Or sometimes you can say mild and it's still super spicy. Yeah, it's hard to get the, the right amount of spiciness. That we can handle. Mm -hmm. But this is pretty good, isn't it? There's a little yeah, kick it's there. Perfect, yeah. Just a good amount for us.
So we've come to the Medina now of Agadir. And it's pretty cool that in the middle they have the game going on. Morocco are playing in the AFCON, the African Football Cup. Big screen in the Medina. Everybody is excited for the game. Yeah, they're all watching. So already at the entrance it looks incredible here. It was 40 dirhams per person to come here. We got a local taxi here. They do the meter. I think it was only like 23 to get here, so not much at all. It's been pretty quiet in Agadir so far. I mean, we have seen tourists, but not that many really. I thought we'd see a lot more. This place seems pretty empty. Barely anybody here. So the original Medina was destroyed in 1960 by a big earthquake that they had here. It actually destroyed the majority of Agadir. I think a third of the population died. Around 15,000 people. So really, really bad earthquake. And some of you might know that Morocco just had another bad earthquake recently. It seems like they have a hard time with earthquakes around here. Big amphitheatre. Yeah, uh, they're like having something here, maybe at night, I don't know, some kind of event. Yeah, it looks like they have speakers, microphones. Even big cameras. Oh yeah, some sort of show here going on. Yeah, literally everywhere you look in this place, looks amazing. So this was built in 1992, so it's not an old one, but obviously they've made it look like uh, an ancient Medina. In a way, it actually looks nicer than a lot of the medinas that you can visit. The real medinas, because everything's kind of perfect, the designs. Even got the medina cats, like in, Mar in Marrakesh. Cows already took a hundred photos. Yeah, everything's so beautiful. Yeah, so Sunday is probably not the best day to come because there's loads of restaurants here but they seem to be closed and it looks like the rooms were really beautiful where the restaurants are. I'm not sure if it's like that on Saturday too. I have to read about it. So I ended up going for a coffee, 20 dirham. Okay, I've got some orange juice, 18 dirham. Nice and quiet now, it's half time so they put it on pause. And we've been to some reconstructions like this before in Dubai and Abu Dhabi but this one is way way nicer, way more picturesque. So we're gonna head up to the fort now and you can actually get there by a cable car Le Téléphérique de Agadir A good French? Yeah <laughs> Daniel Land So that's cool because I always like getting on the cable carts La cabine VIP est arrivée Yeah so it's 120 per person She said we could also get a private one for 
800 overall, but it's private anyway because nobody's here. But I think the other one had some fancy yeah, stuff. The cabin was better. They had like Wi Fi inside the cabin and lounge access yeah, before. Lounge access. I don't know, but we don't want that. Also, on the way back from the Medina, we got a different taxi this time called Grand Taxi. And it's not meter, it's like a fixed price. So this one was 70. So a lot more expensive than the smaller taxi that we got for the orange one. So if you're on a budget, go for the the orange taxis, the meter taxis. Yeah, we were going to get the the petite taxi, which is the small one, but there was none available. At yeah, that there was time. none waiting. Yeah, so we had to get the bigger one, more expensive. So that was a really smooth ride to get here. Might actually be the smoothest cable car that we've ever been on. And definitely the best place to come for views of Agadir. That was the beach we were on. Got the marina here. And this is a fishing port. I think it's the biggest fishing port in Morocco. And this is the Caspa, the fort where you had the, the old city. Also a reconstruction because of that earthquake Unfortunately, it destroyed this place too. So the original one was from the 16th century. So really old, one of the first settlements around here. Here they have some images before the earthquake and after the earthquake. You can see the difference, all damaged. Ah uh, yeah, so that was before. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's completely destroyed in this one, like collapsed everything. You can see in the photo, once again before the earthquake, it was like the minaret of a mosque. But I think everything got completely flattened inside. So I was just reading on Google Maps about the reviews of this place and apparently the earthquake of last year, 2023, uh, affected the inside of this place and that's why you cannot go inside anymore. But before, I think one year ago, uh, you could go inside. So maybe in a few months, it will be open again. Yeah, I guess they're repairing some things. Yeah. Would have been cool to see how it is on the inside. Seems to be a nice walkway along the outside though, at least. It's kind of worth coming up here just for the views anyway. So even at the back of the Caspa, you can still see some of the walls down there. So I guess it would have been protected at the bottom too. And I read that before this was built, there was actually a Portuguese settlement here. The Portuguese had settled here in the 1500s and they also had some sort of fort here at the bottom. So there was a time where both forts were here and then eventually the locals here conquered the Portuguese and they all fled. So in the reviews, this is another one of the places that it says that the vendors are a nuisance and they keep bothering you. But once again, that just hasn't been happening to us at all. Pretty much nobody spoke to us. And we think that might be because of Carol. Yeah, I think uh, they think I'm Moroccan, maybe. And I've had a few people come talk, to, come talk to me in Arabic. And also even here at the cable car station, the lady asked if I was Moroccan because uh, I would get a better price. but. I, I said I, I'm not Moroccan, but she said I look Moroccan, so maybe they don't bother me as much. 
bother us as much because they think I'm Moroccan. The yeah, they think you're a local. Yeah. Yeah, it's really happened a lot. Like people at the hotels have thought Carol was Moroccan when we were going to hand over our passports and stuff. So you do kind of look Moroccan though. Yeah, I think You so. look similar to the locals. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> So we're back in Tagazut now. We ended up coming back by taxi. It was 150, and this is the beach in front of our place where we're staying back there. Never actually seen it so low tide so far. Been here quite a few days. Never had this much beach area. I think every time we had a drink and ate at these places, this was just covered in water. Yeah, the tide is extra low, but I think that means that it's gonna be extra high. So we're gonna sleep with the, the sound of the waves even stronger. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> there seems to be way more people on the beach here too today. Maybe because it's a Sunday. Beach is not usually this busy. Overall, I'm definitely glad that we decided to stay in Tagazu though over Agadir. Oh yeah, yeah. We like the Tagazu a lot more than Agadir. It's mainly because the, of the vibe. Very laid back and relaxing. So it's our type of place. Yeah, it also seems a bit more authentic, I guess. The buildings. I just like the layout overall. So that's gonna be it for this video. We actually have two more days here, but we're not really gonna be doing any filming. Just gonna do some work on the laptop and hopefully learn to surf a bit more. Hopefully the waves are good for us to try surfing over the next two days. And in the next video, we're gonna be in Ezawira, which is another very popular destination here in Morocco. So if you like this video, just drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you in the next one.